It's the battle we've been waiting for. Giant ape versus colossal lizard. It's Godzilla versus Kong. So who's gonna win? And more importantly, do we get tons of monster carnage? As a squadron embarks on a perilous mission into fantastic, uncharted terrain, a conspiracy threatens to wipe the creatures, both good and bad, from the face of the Earth forever. Okay, we get from the title that there will be a showdown between the two titans in the MonsterVerse, but I want to talk about some of the negatives and get those out of the way to begin with. Just like in King of the Monsters, the weakest portion of this movie is the human characters. Millie Bobby Brown and Kyle Chandler return, and now we have the addition of Rebecca Hall, Kaylee Hoddle, Alexander Skarsgård, Isaac Gonzalez, Julian Dennison, Demian Bashir, and the standout of the humans, Brian Tyree Henry. There's not a ton of development on our characters, but we understand enough about them for them to not be distractions, and they also help carry the story from portion to portion. We need them there also to voice the exposition that explains why a monster might do something. Because, you know, the monsters, they don't talk, they just scream and yell at each other. I like Brian Tyree Henry because he's a conspiracy theory nut. He feels a little forced, but at least we get the most believable interactions outside of the deaf little girl played by Kaylee Hoddle. Now she's great, and I think she brings the most emotion out of any of the human players. Which is funny too because she only speaks in sign language, so she's able to create more emotion in her performance without speaking than any of the others who do have speaking lines. Now Henry is fun and he provides some levity. Only about half of it works though, but since the humans aren't the main focus, it didn't bother me too much. The motivations of the human antagonists aren't too solid, or maybe it's just that they're not terribly interesting from a story standpoint. I mean, I get what they want, but do I care? Ultimately, nah, not too much. Just give me the monsters. At one point too, we get a villain monologue. And while I feel this is a trope that should be avoided, the story does recognize what it's doing and it addresses it in a fitting way. We get to see our monster stars pretty early in the film, which I liked. But there is a point at the beginning that almost feels like they are going to retcon the character of Godzilla. The context and the explanation doesn't come until later in the film, so that part of it felt a little weird. And then after the opening portion, we don't see the monsters for a little bit. There's a bunch of human exposition that tries to build some lore and emotional conflict, but because it's shallow and even kind of clunky, the only thing it really does is keep us from seeing Godzilla and Kong. And because of that, the only time where the pace of the film ever drags is in between the monster action. They don't even have to be fighting each other. Just when they're on screen, the story then feels like it has more of a purpose and it doesn't drag. All right, so let's get into why we all want to see a movie like this. I went into this movie expecting some all-out destruction. I mean, I wanted fights, buildings being demolished, cities being raised, things being flung, some great Kong punches, and of course, Godzilla's atomic breath. And that's what I got. There are a few wonderful battles where we get to see the monsters fight, and it's pretty satisfying with all the explosions and the brutality. And it's funny to watch the humans get involved in some of the fights as if they've learned nothing from the last time they tried to fight with Godzilla. I'm always curious at what they think the outcome will be by firing a ton of missiles at Godzilla. I mean, do they think they're going to deter him, or don't they realize they're just going to piss him off more? There's one point with a shot that involves Kong, and it looks a lot like John McClane leaping off the top of Nakatomi Plaza. And I'm not sure if it was intentional, but either way, it was cool. The special effects are pretty good. There are a few scenes that do look like they're more from a video game than a movie, but that's not the majority of the time. The textures of the monsters are wonderfully done, and there are a bunch of times that we are super up close to them, and so we get to see the cracks in their skin and just the little fine hairs, and even their pupils in their eyes, they look great. And there's at least one shot where the camera just zooms into an eye, and so we get to watch the reflected action in that eye. There's also a portion of the story that involves a pretty cool location. And not only is the trip there exciting and fun to watch, but the destination is beautiful and surreal too. And the film captures it in a good way that makes sense within the story. As exciting as all the battles are, a few though feel like they're cut just a bit short. It's like they're wrapped up too soon, leaving them feeling stunted when they could have been even more epic. And I only say that because the fights are so much fun, and I just really wanted to see even more of them. Some of the action takes place in a city that is lit up with a ton of neon. It's beautiful because it provides a very colorful glow to our monsters as they just fight it out in the middle of the night. And we saw a little of that in the trailer, but it's even better in the movie. And I was almost getting an old school Rampage vibe too, as we see two of the three monsters just tearing down buildings. All we're missing is the wolf. I think the story does a good job of creating some emotion for our monsters as well. Surprisingly, they can have sympathetic moments to them, which sometimes makes it hard to know who to root for in a battle. 
you know, I mean, given the title of the movie and all, they are going to battle. So if you're a fan of the MonsterVerse and you don't really care about the human component to this, you're going to have a pretty good time watching all the destruction. Like I had said, I could have used even more battles and carnage and less of the human side, but for what we get, I was thoroughly entertained. So what's next for the MonsterVerse? There wasn't any post credit scene in my screening, so is this the end or will we get to see more down the road? I'm hoping there's more because it's an exciting escape. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and a ton of violence. I give Godzilla vs. Kong 4 out of 5 couches. So who are you rooting for, Godzilla or Kong? Let me know in the comments below. And please don't share any of the spoilers in the comments if you've already seen the movie so that everybody gets to just have fun the first time. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.